We finally have weekly Dragon Ball back on TV, and I can't express how I'm feeling right now. It's a mix of everything. Happy to see Dragon Ball finally back on TV, and sad at the same time since Akira Toriyama is no longer with us to celebrate this new anime. I'm sure you get what I mean, right? Given how impactful Dragon Ball has been in all our lives, I'm sure this episode must have touched your hearts as it did mine. Not gonna lie, but watching Goku, Vegeta, and others back on my TV screen after six long years made me cry a little. Daima may not be super, but watching a new animated Dragon Ball series still feels unreal, even though hours have passed since I first watched it. Without any further ado, let's start discussing the episode. I can't wait to talk about it. The episode starts off with an introduction of what Dragon Balls are, the wish-granting orbs that have helped out Goku and his friends every time they need. We see classic Chikashi Kubota animated scenes where Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan and dashes towards us as if even Goku is happy to come back to the TV screens. Reminds you of the superhero movie flashback drawn by Kubota himself. We also see a visual of Barak in his Minus outfit. In this intro scene where the narrator explains Goku's origins as a Saiyan and how he came to Earth, it was quite unexpected to see Bardock in a flashback like this. This could be an homage to how Toyotaro showed Goku and Bardock's families in a reflection on the Dragon Ball Super Volume 19 cover. We then see Goku's journey from when he was a kid and how he met Bulma, Krillin, Master Roshi, Chi Chi, Piccolo, and all the others who are part of the journey, except Launch. I don't know why Toriyama and his team of writers always keep forgetting that woman particularly. The narrator explains how Earth had been a target of many villains like Raditz, the Saiyans, Frieza, Cell, and Majin Buu, but Goku and friends always manage to protect the Earth with everything they've got. The villain's illustrations stop at Kid Buu, meaning that the story is definitely set after Kid Buu's death. However, there are a few things that don't make sense in this episode, we'll talk about it once we get there. This is where the intro scene ends, and then we see the entire Z team assembled for the title screen pose. And surprise surprise, we have Gohan here as well, but will he appear in Daima in any form? That remains to be seen. The episode then begins in the Demon Realm, where we see Goma and Degasu in their castle watching the events of the Majin Buu saga unfold on their monitors. Goma is basically mad at Babidi for making Demon King Deborah follow his orders. Upon seeing Supreme Kai, Goma asks Degasu if it's his brother. Degasu is surprised and mad at Supreme Kai for getting involved with puny mortals. Then we see Majin Vegeta versus Goku's fight, and Degasu tells Goma that the reason they're this powerful might be because they're demons too, to which Goma denies by saying that their ears are round, unlike demons. And I must tell you, the Majin Vegeta versus Goku's fight has never looked this good. Chikashi Kubota deserves all the praise, we're so lucky to have him work on this series. When Goma and Degasu see Majin Buu turn Deborah into a chocolate and eat him, they totally lose their shit. But Degasu sees this as an opportunity for Goma to get crowned as the next Demon King. They then discover the existence of Namekians and the Dragon Balls on Earth. It seems they know about Planet Namek's Dragon Balls as well since they know about Paranga and call the Earth Balls the smaller ones. Which adds to the fact that Namekians actually came to Universe 7 from the Demon Realm as Elder Muri said something similar in Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 69 when he was explaining Namekian origins to the kids. However, Degasu is surprised to learn that there are seven Dragon Balls on Earth. Later we find out that in the Demon Realm, Dragon Balls exist as well, but there are only three of them and they're attached to robot-like beings that they call Tamagamis and don't seem to grant a wish when gathered. Moving on, Degasu and Goma are greatly relieved to see Bob but he die at the hands of Majin Buu. Seeing how incredibly Gotenks, Gohan, and Goku fought against Buu and finally defeated him makes Goma and Degasu shocked to see how such powerful beings exist in the outside world. Then enters the beautiful Dr. Arinzu. It's revealed that Degasu and Arinzu are actually siblings, which makes her a Kai as well. Arinzu asks Goma to continue funding his research like Deborah used to before he died. Arinzu tells Goma that his research might come in handy to him in the future to be ready to fight against the ones who defeated Majin Buu. This gives Goma the idea to use the Dragon Balls to eliminate Goku and the other Z fighters but a dark wish like eliminating them wouldn't work, so they decide to make them younger to reduce their power. The three wishes that Goma decides are, make the ones who defeated Majin Buu young, getting the evil third eye that is said to grant unimaginable power to the wearer, and the third wish is for Degasu to decide. I guess this will be a major twist in the series, and they could hide us the third wish, like how they hid us Moro's second wish, which was kind of a big twist later in the story. We then find out that Glorio had been hearing all the conversation from the beginning in a corner. Goma, Degasu, and the Namekian in the Demon Realm, Neva, then get ready to go to the Mortal Realm, Earth and get their wishes granted by the Dragon Balls. Neva is happy to learn that other Namekians do exist outside the Demon Realm. Goma and others get into another dimension that transports them to Universe 7's Earth. There they learn that someone else has been to Earth as well, and that's none other than Dr. Arinzu. This could be one of those upcoming twists that could cause some trouble for our heroes. Finally on Earth, we jump to Trunks' birthday with all the Z-Warriors enjoying a nice party and meal. However, there's the absence of Gohan who is very focused on his studies. There's also quite a funny exchange between those at the party that starts with Krillin and Trunks discussing their 
height, and Goku saying that even though Saiyans tend to really grow from the age of 15 onwards, it looks like Vegeta never really got to grow that much. There's also an interesting conversation with Kibito and Shin who have undone their fusion. How so? That Majin Buu produces a sort of gas that is able to break up the effect of the Patar earrings. After eating all kinds of nice food, Goku and Vegeta decide to go for a quick workout in the form of a fight that is actually really well animated, with all sorts of great effects and clashes from the two Saiyans. Going back to Degasu and Goma, they ask for the Dragon Balls, but Dende refuses. At this point, it is also revealed that the Namekians actually come from the Demon Realm, using their pointy ears as proof. After that, Goma convinces Neva so that he picks up the Dragon Balls by himself. Using strange powers, Neva is able to locate each of the seven Dragon Balls and instantly claim them. Not only that, but Neva also undoes the petrification state of the Dragon Balls, so they can be used once again. With the Dragon Balls now operative, Goma and Degasu ask Shenron to turn all those who helped in the Majin Buu fight into kids. There's a funny interaction here with Shenron asking which age they should be, and Goma kinda getting nervous at all the specific stuff. The episode then ends with Goku and his friends starting to suffer the effects of the wish, implying that in episode 2 we will already see them as kids. Going into episode 2, which is called Glorio, it looks as though the very same Glorio will finally take part in the action. As for how he will involve himself in all this mess, well that's for Dragon Ball Daima to tell. Thank you so much for watching, and please remember to subscribe so that you can keep up with all the Dragon Ball content, including more Daima reviews.